Good evening, everyone, for Telesaur English. I'm Sarah Began in Caracas, Venezuela. We start tonight in Havana, Cuba. That's where the leftist FARC guerrillas have resumed peace talks with the Colombian government after an end of year break. In this new round of talks, the two sides will continue discussions on compensation for victims of the 50 year conflict, as well as the mechanisms for ending the fighting. The government and the revolutionary armed forces of Colombia have been negotiating for two years, but key issues remain unresolved. The Mexican government has admitted that the 43 Ayotzinapa students who were kidnapped by police in September are victims of enforced disappearance. The comments came as the relatives of the teacher training students attended the United Nations Committee of Enforced Disappearances in Geneva, Switzerland, in the first of two meetings. The government of Venezuela has denounced the plans of the international right wing against the Bolivarian revolution. President Maduro urged the people to be alert. I will make a call to the people and to patriotic officials to be on maximum alert to oppose a plan for a coup in Venezuela and we should unite the popular forces and the military forces to defeat whatever form of the coup d'etat. Argentina's cabinet chief Jorge Capitanich has ripped up a copy of the newspaper Clarín live on TV. During a press conference, Capitanich tore up the paper after it published accusations against President Fernandez in connection with the death of Alberto Nisman. Clarín has long been at odds with the government, but Capitanich said truth always triumphs, and he warned the paper this is how it's going to be from now on. Staying in Argentina, the government has sent to Congress a bill to create a new intelligence agency. Last week, President Cristina Fernandez announced she was dissolving the old secret service following its possible involvement in the death of federal attorney Alberto Nisman. From Buenos Aires, Leo Poblete has more. The national executive has submitted the bill for the creation of the Federal Intelligence Agency, the AFI, the bill right here in my hand to the Senate. The announcement of the creation of the AFI was made by President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner last week. Now, in an eight-page forward to the bill, the government has noted that the same conviction that has struggled against state terrorism is also directed at seeking the truth about the acts of international terrorism which have occurred here in Argentina. Special sessions of Congress throughout February to debate the bill and have it approved in the quickest time possible commence this week here in Buenos Aires and right here on Telesur we'll keep you up to date on all the latest developments in this issue. Back to you in Caracas. And in world news, Greece's new Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras says that Eurozone debt is a crisis for the whole continent. The left-wing leader was speaking in Cyprus at the start of the European tour to rally support for his campaign to write off part of Greece's debt. Cyprus has also been hit hard by the crisis. Tsipras urged other European governments to adopt policies to promote growth. Europe is in crisis, not just Greece and Cyprus. The economic crisis is with us. Anyone who understands economics knows very well that stagnation and inflation are two big traps. Therefore, Europe must move ahead with courageous decisions so that growth can return. President Obama has requested $4 trillion in his 2016 budget proposal submitted to Congress. To the dismay of critics, he would allocate $38 billion more to military operations than congressional spending limits allow. We go to Alexandra Hall for this report. Defined spending cap set by Congress in 2011 known as the sequester, President Obama on Monday submitted a proposal on what he thinks the federal government should do with its money in 2016. My budget will end sequestration and fully reverse the cuts to domestic priorities in 2016. And it will match the investments that were made domestically, dollar for dollar, with increases in our defense funding. 
The proposal solicits $534 billion for the base defense budget and $51 billion in war funding, most of which would go towards Afghanistan, counterterrorism operations, and continue regular benefits for active military. Some say it's worth it. If you're sacrificing your life, I feel like you deserve, you know, the best. If the amount uh, is, is necessary to keep us safe, I think it's uh, appropriate. However, the proposed budget requests $38 billion more in military spending than is currently permitted by law. Many Americans would agree with, uh, you know, spending a lot on the defense budget, but when you put it in context, they may not realize that some of those other things are getting crowded out. Other things like education or health care. Unlike the war fund, which isn't subject to spending caps, discretionary spending on domestic initiatives is limited, period. As defense spending grows, it crowds out domestic funding for other things, for things like Head Start, things like uh, programs that, that regular people need. And the domestic doesn't necessarily have the very nice war funding account that they can sort of move things over into. President Obama's proposal also calls for a boost of what his administration calls middle class economics in the 21st century, public works projects outlined in the State of the Union that would require tax cuts, tax hikes, and likely won't get past Republicans in Congress without a fight. In Washington, Alexandra Hall, Telesur. Thanks to Alex. The governments of Russia, China, and India have agreed that they must work together to create a multipolar world. Meeting in Beijing, Russia and India added their voices to China's call for a new world order. President Xi Jinping gave a positive assessment of China's ties with the two nations, despite the traditional rivalry between his country and India. In a joint communique, the three nations vowed to build a more just, fair and stable international order. In Germany, the former leader of the right-wing Pegida movement, Catherine Ortel, has announced that her new group, Direct Democracy for Europe, will hold its first rally on Sunday. She wants to offer a more right-leaning voice to politics in Germany. Furthermore, we are keeping our targets for the future and agreed to a fund of new union which will run under the name Direct Democracy for Europe. Anti-fascist protesters have taken to the streets in Berlin to demonstrate against a march by the right-wing Pegida movement. Music in various languages, including reggae and hip-hop, was played over speakers to show solidarity with Berlin's multicultural population. Police were deployed in large numbers to prevent clashes between the two groups. Hamas supporters in Gaza have demonstrated against an Egyptian court's decision to ban the armed wing of the Palestinian movement Hamas, waving the green flag of the movement, which controls the coastal territory, demonstrators chanted, quote, Hamas is not terrorist, unquote, and quote, Hamas is our pride, unquote. The rally took a place in the northern Gaza town of Jabalia. An Egyptian court has confirmed death sentences against 183 supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood for allegedly playing a role in the deaths of 16 police officers in 2013. Egypt has mounted one of its biggest crackdowns since the political demise of Morsi, the country's first democratically elected president. Thousands of Brotherhood supporters have been arrested and put on mass trial in a campaign which human rights groups say shows the government is systematically repressing opponents. Staying with Egypt, the family of Peter Graste, the Australian journalist, just released after more than 400 days in prison, say he will keep fighting to free his colleagues who are still jailed in Egypt. The four surviving manuscripts of the Magna Carta are on display together for the first time as Britain marks 800th anniversary of one of its defining documents. The Magna Carta is considered the starting point for modern Western democracy and the rule of law. The English document forms the basis for many legal systems across the globe as well as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the US Constitution. 
it's established that the king was subject to the law and it's been used in the centuries since it was granted as a defence against arbitrary and unjust rulers and of course it has enormous symbolic importance as a symbol of rights and justice and freedom around the world. And to finish up tonight, the European Space Agency has published a series of pictures showing the historic land of the Philae space module. The device last year became the first gadget directed by human beings to land on the surface of a comet. The pictures were taken on November 12, 2014. Philae touched down on the comet after three landing attempts and two rebounds. NASA is hoping to reactivate the module between May and June when the comet is closer to the sun, which will allow Philae's solar batteries to recharge. More on these and other stories on our website, telesaw.tv.net slash English. For Telesaw English, I'm Sarah Begum. Good night. <laughs>